Hello and welcome to How to Defeat a Cyberman in 3 Simple Steps. Step 1, grab any old spray bottle. Step 2, fill it up with nail polish remover and pretty much just any liquid you got lying around. I don't know, it doesn't matter. And finally, Step 3. Hello, I am a Cyberman here to- Ah, ah, I didn't think I could feel pain, but this freaking hurts now. Oh, ah, ah, I'm melting, I'm melting, oh, what a world. It's apparently that easy. And here I was thinking that ducking underneath a Dalek's laser beam and shoving mud in its eye stalk was the cheapest way of defeating an enemy. After only five cereals, my beloved Cybermen are already back in the Moon Base. Sticking with the easily digestible four-part structure, this 1967 adventure sees the Doctor, Ben, Polly, and Jamie land next to the Weather Control Station on the moon in the year 2070. This is yet another DVD with animated missing episodes, but of course we'll get around to that later. The cliffhanger from the end of the underwater menace where the TARDIS seemed to be spinning out of control and looked like it was going to crash just doesn't happen. It doesn't play into anything, it was never referenced again, so that was pointless. The story wastes absolutely no time getting going, with Jamie immediately bonking his head, knocking him unconscious due to low gravity, causing the TARDIS crew to take shelter within this weather control station, aka the titular moon base. Not sure why Earth thought it was such a good idea putting something so crucial to the planet up on the moon? I guess humans are even more stupid than they are now this time in 50 years. Oh gosh. Of course, there's already trouble brewing, with a mysterious virus spreading rapidly throughout the base, with the Doctor not even hesitating a moment to offer some medical aid. A far cry from the first Doctor's early stories where it's like, Oh, what's that? You're in mortal peril? Ah, yes, well, I only just got here, but, you know, I've got some human companions to belittle, so... Sucks to be you. Bye! Unfortunately, I found the pacing to be way too quick, rushing through setup and important dialogue. Jamie's hallucinating this weird McCrimmon Phantom Piper. Oh no, it's the Phantom Piper! He's come to take me to the afterlife! I won't go! Don't ask. This leads to the sudden, unceremonious reveal of a Cyberman as the episode 1 credits start to roll. Um, underwhelming? Like I already said, the pacing is so rushed, so in the end there's just, there's just no weight to the reveal. It's just like, oh, there he is. It's Cyberman. Cool music though. Yes, you'll be hearing me mention the pacing a lot, so prepare yourself. Why is it so cold today? Episode 2 is where things really start to get going. The Doctor is given a time frame in the form of 24 hours to solve this mysterious virus case that's going around. We get to see the Doctor display some real confidence in what he's doing, which I liked, because, you know, normally he's just like, oh, hey, let's go get some dirt samples. Getting to see his superior intellect put to good use, as well as utilising Ben and Polly, because, you know, Jamie's unconscious, like... That was endearing to see, rather than um, doing a Sherlock and being like, Oh yes, I know everything, you know, you're dumb, go away. Sorry, I don't mean to rag on the first Doctor so much. I've just been re-watching some of my previous reviews, and I, I'd almost forgotten how unpleasant the Doctor was in like his first season or two. So you've got the three of them working well together while Jamie's, you know, out for the count. But the episode still gets hampered down by a lot of boring weather control dialogue. Like, yeah, that's, that's what we came to see. It's so strange. I had vague memories of this. Perhaps elements of this are used in a future story down the line that I've already seen. Or maybe I'd watched episode 3 on the Lost in Time box set like a decade ago and just forgotten about it, but there's just, I don't know, just this sense of deja vu when I was watching the episodes. Look, I'm sorry for just rambling through a lot of this, but I've been trying to avoid the inevitable revelation that I, I was let down by this. The story is pretty average and just all over the place, but I, I just love the Cybermen so much. They definitely saved it for me. Actually, without the Cybermen, it would kind of suck. Like, if these were just generic bad guy aliens used for just this one episode, like, I don't think anyone would find it memorable. I oh, know, I probably wouldn't like it. Ah, the pacing is so bad, because it can go from brilliant and exciting right to boring and mundane in a heartbeat. Even the cliffhanger was lame. Does not instill much confidence for the Macra Terra. 
Big Crab. As usual, what I like to do when I don't enjoy a story as much as, you know, watch a couple of the DVD behind the scenes special features. And in this case, it did help me to appreciate the magnificent sets and some of the more subtle acting nuances. Particularly in Patrick Troughton's case, apparently the director reeled him in a little bit to give him a more subdued performance which just added this extra layer of seriousness and gravitas to the proceedings. Interrupted by the postman. Uh, thinking back, I want to say that like all the pieces were there to make a phenomenal story and they just failed in execution. Or not failed, but they just didn't capitalise on the great material they had. Maybe it would make for a good book? Yeah, yeah, I'd be interested in reading the novelization. Then perhaps some of the pointless scenes, you know, they might have a purpose. For instance, there's a moment where a bunch of Cybermen slowly trundle along, they set up this big laser-guided rocket thing, they fire it off a couple of times and the good guys deflect it, they do it again, they deflect it again, and they give up. That was a scene. Or how about this one scene that comes and goes so fast, and maybe I just misread it, but if not, has some seriously harrowing implications. It's only a brief moment crammed in amongst a million other things happening all at once, but I'm pretty sure a relief craft sent from Earth, presumably full of crew members, was sent spinning off, like deflected off its flight path and into the gravitational pull of the sun, where they have no chance of escaping, yet it will still take a full week for the craft to collide with the sun. Like, that gets brought up and dismissed, like, within a minute in the episode. But that's horrifying. Imagine you're stuck on a spacecraft, hurtling towards the sun, no hope of rescue, no hope of escape, and you just know that it's going to take a week for you to crash and burn, and there's nothing you can do about it. It sounds like a damn horror movie. Okay, now that I've given myself science fiction nightmares for another month, there are two things I'd like to discuss before wrapping this up, those being the animation and the Cybermen. Let's tackle the animation real quick. Episodes 1 and 3 are lost, so they are presented here in glorious official BBC sanctioned animation quality. So, you know, pretty mediocre. I was so surprised when I found out that the team that did episodes 1 and 3 of this are the same that did the infamously abysmal Reign of Terror animation and the surprisingly good 10th Planet episode 4. I couldn't believe that when I read it because the 10th Planet animation was fine and so was the moon base. But I really despise that Reign of Terror one. I've since come to learn why thanks to good old Josh Schneers, but you know, it didn't take away from the fact that I was like, wait, these guys are responsible for that abomination? I know I once said I wanted to keep myself in the dark on like which animation studios did which, you know, animated reconstructions, but in this case they only did like two or three, so it's fine. And look how far they've come. Still not the quality I think a show like Doctor Who probably deserves, like with the legacy that it has, but you know, I've softened up a little bit. Just a little bit. There's smooth movement and fairly detailed facial expressions, but they still just look wrong. So uncanny, like the faces are too small for the characters' heads. How the heck is this the same team responsible for those awful close-ups seen in the Reign of Terror? I will never know. Now for the good stuff, the Cyberman. Back by popular demand so soon after their first appearance, they have thankfully undergone a bit of a style makeover. Their voices have been fixed. No longer speaking in weird vocal inflections, but now just a more monotone voice with a heavy filter. It's still not perfect and can be pretty inaudible at times, but it does the trick for now. The costume design has been significantly improved. No more bulky chest plate, no more excessive tubing anywhere, and no more stupid giant lamp weapon, instead replaced with a good old fashioned gun and force lightning. Yeah, still don't know about that one. And they do briefly use my favourite music from Tomb of the Cybermen, which I guess technically means it originates here. It's classic, catchy, and memorable. I would love to play you some, so you can, you know, know what I'm talking about, but, you know, if I did that, then BBC Copyright would come along and... Whoa! I honestly expected more of a reaction from the Doctor, you know, considering that the Cybermen were the cause of his recent death and regeneration. Oh, well, you know, fainting randomly in Episode 3 was, but, you know, we don't talk about that. Yep, the Cybermen are still awesome. I think it's safe to say that the Moon Base would be a vastly inferior product without their involvement. Even if all it takes to bring them down is, you know, a little spray bottle full of nail polish remover. Actually, in the end, they just get yeeted off into space. I... Moving on. Thank you as ever for watching. I was really bummed to find out that I didn't enjoy the Moon Base as much, but next week I'll be taking a look at the Macra Terra animated remake, which, you know, fun fact, is actually partially responsible for me starting this review series in the first place, but we'll discuss that next time. Have an awesome day. Hopefully you'll see me then.